um, I'll tell you a series of dreams that, that are kind of, I think, foundational to, to my spiritual uh, practice and also integral recovery. But when I was a kid, there were two parts. I'll tell you the second part. I saw myself in front of this big pit, just gore and darkness and all this, and I, I would freak out, and I'd wake up, and I would be, like, just terrified. And, you know, it would take me a couple of hours to come down from this just shocking fear that I had, and then I'd take a bath and get back in my body, and it would comfort me. It's okay, John. It's okay. <laughs> so this happened several times. It scared the hell out of me. So later, years later, when I was in graduate school at John F. Kennedy, um, we were doing a process group, and there was a woman who was really going down into her deep process. And you notice when you're a group, and somebody has the courage to take it really deeply, it really opens your capacity to go deep too. Yeah. So it did. Mm -hmm. God bless you, whoever you were. I can't remember. But anyway, and so I had this kind of waking vision as we were in this process, and I saw myself again in front of that pit. And this time, instead of freaking out, I dove into it. And I just dove, and I swam, and I swam, and I was all this gore and stuff, and, uh, and then poof, I break out. I'm in this beautiful, clear, blue-green water, and it's all the dirt and stuff comes off, and I, I swim up, and poof, I break the surface, and I'm in this beautiful ocean, and there's two, I guess, two islands and white beaches and palm trees, just this paradisical, just gorgeous, gorgeous scene. And I was like, ah, the way out is through. The way to what I want, I have to go through the darkness. And that's what we begin to learn, that we have to go through our cravings, through our fears, through our traumas. And, it, and when we go through that, it opens up into this much expanded, healed, uh, blissful, wise uh, level, which is our deepest self. So we don't have to worry about it. The deeper we go, the better it gets. And you, do, you can take my word for it in the beginning, but once it becomes a part of your experience, then you can incorporate it, and then you can just keep realizing that. And uh, I found out early on that, that I had a lot more darkness in me than I thought, and I think I would get to, and it would go, oh, it's over. And no, I, I'd break into a whole new, it's like there were barrels stacked, and I think it, a barrel of this darkness, and that was the end of it, then, then the bottom would break out, and there'd be a whole new level of, nah, on and on and on. But the whole time there was a sense of inner wisdom that was, that was coming out of the practice, I knew this is exactly the work that I had to do to get well. And uh, I just kept going and I kept getting freer and freer as it went on. So that's extraordinary. And um, uh, maybe a couple other, uh, when I first started doing Halsink, I had two dreams that were very, very powerful. And often people, well, I don't know, seven out of 10 people report that in the early days of using Halsink, their dreams become much more vivid, much more lucid. But in the dream, I was at this uh, building not too far from here where we started passages to recovery. And uh, we were all in it and we were renovating it and like sawing and building and stuff. And I was saw, and I cut the little tip of my finger off. I went, think. Oh, oh, I'm <laughs> freaking out. And Pam was there and she was saying, Pam, Pam, I cut the tip. And she says, You know, I'm really kind of busy right now. Don't bother me. And I'm like, Nobody cares. I cut the tip of my finger. And so then I shift in the dream time the local clinic <clears throat> and I go up to the dad, I cut the tip of my finger off and they go, okay, sir, at least fill out this form and go sit down and relax. I'm, Nobody cares. I'm sitting there and then it falls off and I'm, I'm going, it's just the tip of my little finger. And as soon as that happens, I blast up through the roof of the clinic and I'm like I'm shot through a rocket ship and, and, I'm, and I'm going up through the clouds and there's clouds and lightning and I'm just, and I go, whoa, I wake up and I'm, what in the heck was that about? And of course, the, the interpretation was that the the tip of our finger is our little ego self. And that is just, <laughs> that is just a, such a minor, dinky, small part of who, what we really are on the deepest level. And as soon as we get that, and we can put that, you know, our existential human struggles and dramas into that larger context of our deepest, truest nature, it's like the, the, the growth just goes, Boom! Through the roof. It's huge. So, and and the second the second dream was I was at this uh, house that I uh, lived at in Houston, Texas for a few years when I was growing up, and uh, I, I look out the back window and there's these huge like prehistoric armadillo -like creatures going on around, calm, calm, and they're like you know big as Mack trucks, you know, with with trailers on them, and they're huge. And I'm like, oh my God! And then different members of my family are there in the dream, and I'm trying to get them into the back of the house and protect them, and I'm, 
oh, these monsters, you know. And then I'm, they're going through, I'm looking out my bedroom window and they're going down the street, calm, calm. And finally I go, hmm. And I crawl through my window and I run out there and I have this a somersault over them. And I don't even, and as soon as I do that, they go, Rrr. I go, wow, that was fun. And I do it again, I go, Rrr. And so by the end of the dream, I'm playing with these monsters and they're about the size of a Volkswagen bug at that point. And um, uh, I wake up and it's like, oh, these, these, these horrible wounds and all this shadow and this darkness and stuff, I don't have to be afraid of it. I can actually play with it creatively and it'll be fun. And as soon as I face them, they begin to, you know, they begin to decrease. And so, you know, all these fears of, of these monsters I had in the basement and my unconscious, it was just very clear that that was the path uh, that I had to go through that. And Christian Meyer, this German teacher, he says, that is the path to enlightenment. And I don't know if it's the <laughs> path to enlightenment, but it certainly is a way to, to explore your deepest nature and your deepest self and, and uh, so, so eminently applicable to the work that we need to do in an integral recovery process because if we don't do that work, it's just not going to work. It's not going to stick. You know, it'll keep coming up. To keep causing our neurochemistry to, to be unbalanced and stress and unconscious and self-loathing and all this stuff. And you, what do you want to do? You want to use. You want to numb it out. You want to treat yourself again. You want to go back to that thing that you knew worked for a while anyway. And so we have to go back and deal with that kind of uh, stuff.